The equipment's 60 or 70 years old. It's timeless equipment. It's very dependable. It's very simple to work on. It's, it's paid for. It's not extinct, but it's endangered. I'm actually a third generation theater owner. My grandmother uh, was in the movie business in the t 1920s, so it's in my blood. It's my belief that Hollywood doesn't really want the drive-ins around because, uh, you know, we're, we're such a small piece of the business. Corporate America developers started looking for places for malls or, you know, autoplexes or large areas and the drive-ins fit the bill because they were a nice, nice large piece of land. That's why you don't see them in cities, you know. Yeah, I think people are tired of this corporate thing. I mean, I mean, I don't go to Walmart. I go to the local guy and I pay an extra buck. I don't go to the I don't go to the chain restaurants. I look for the mom and pop restaurant. If you can't make a profit, it's going to go away. I stood right here 50 years ago and looked out at all fields. My parents built it in 1949. We opened on April the 19th, 1950. We've been confirmed that we are the oldest owned and operated drive-in in the United States by the original building family still running the same drive-in. I have memories myself of just living a few blocks from here and be able to pick up the FM transmission from the movie and be able to hear Pam's opening announcement. It's time turn your key to the accessory position. Tune your radio to 106.3 FM. That's 106.3 FM. Both features are broadcast over that station as well as over the speakers on the poles beside the cars. Whether it's a city or a town and they do not have a drive-in left or they've seen a drive-in closed, they've lost a lot of their togetherness, their community being a together thing. It is something to do with having been brought up and grown with this one. It is very sad to see that gone. This is not a business. This really is home. Thank you.